When Kurt Cobain died, the band's unplugged session was the clip that ran with almost every news story because the event was, by design, more like a funeral than a concert. No wonder then that the guitar Kurt Cobain played on the night went on to be the most expensive guitar ever sold at auction, going for the sum of $6 million, beating then record holder David Gilmour's Black Strat by $2 million. But the famous price tag wasn't the only interesting thing about the guitar. Fact 1. The guitar itself was an extremely rare model. So everyone knows that Kurt had a thing for less common guitars. When grunge hit and Nirvana's contemporaries like Pearl Jam and Soundgarden were playing Les Pauls and Strats, Kurt was known for playing lesser known guitars like Fender's Jaguar and the Univox High Flyer. Even his acoustics were somewhat unusual with the guitar used on Polly from Nevermind being a, a Harmony Stella 12 string acoustic that he bought for $20 from a pawn shop and he strung with five, not even six, nylon strings. Now according to his guitar tech Ernie Bailey, Kurt had always wanted a Martin acoustic guitar and when the Nevermind money started coming in sometime in 1993, Kurt set his sights on a version of the classic D18 Dreadnought that was Martin's first attempt at adding electronics onto an acoustic guitar, hence the model number D18E. Now the D18E suffered from having two d pickups, three control knobs and a pickup selector mounted directly onto the spruce top. By all accounts it killed the distinctive sound of the D18, resulting in Martin giving up the model after an initial run of 302 guitars. According to the auction catalogue for Kurt's guitar, his was the seventh of the run. Kurt bought the guitar from Voltage Guitars in LA, added a Barlatoni 3AV pickup and gave the guitar its debut at Club Lingerie in LA on September 8th, 1993. The Martin was also used on six further shows before gracing the MTV Unplugged stage on November 18th, 1993, some five months before his death. Fact 2. The D18 was likely the last guitar Kurt ever played. So this fact comes from Courtney Love, make of that what you will. She wasn't with him in the final two weeks of his life, but the Martin was the guitar he played at home in the last time she spent with him. And in the years since his death, she did reference the Martin as the last guitar he ever played. Now as far as live performances, the last time the Martin was used in public was in Milan on February 25th, 1994 on Nirvana's ill-fated final European tour. Four days later on March 1st in Munich, Nirvana played their last show, with Kurt using one of his blue Mustangs for their final song, Heart Shaped Box. The plan had been to resume the tour a few days later, but unfortunately that didn't happen, and Kurt was of course found dead only four weeks later. By the way, we're going to be doing one of these videos every week, so if you like this one, please consider subscribing to be notified when they're released, and if you'd like to suggest a guitar for us to cover, please leave a comment below. Fact 3. After his death, Kurt's daughter lost the guitar in her divorce. So after Kurt died, his possessions went to his family with his daughter Frances Bean, not even two years old at the time of his death, inheriting 37% of his estate on her 18th birthday in 2010, which notably included his unplugged Martin guitar. Now in June of 2014, Frances married musician Isaiah Silva of the Eries, filing for divorce less than two years later. By all accounts, the divorce got pretty ugly with Frances at the time estimated to be worth $11 million. According to court records, she made around $100,000 per month from Nirvana royalties alone. One of the specifically contentious items in the divorce was the Martin, with Silva claiming Francis had given him the guitar as a gift, something she vehemently denied. Ultimately, Silva got the guitar as part of the divorce, and while the auction three years later didn't specifically name names, it's widely accepted that Silva was the seller. Fact four, Courtney Love is alleged to have tried to steal back the guitar. So in 2018, Silva filed a suit against Courtney Love, claiming that she tried to have him kidnapped and possibly even killed in order to get the Martin back. His story went like this. In 2016, three men broke into his West Hollywood home, banged on his bedroom door, claiming to be the LAPD. One of the men was former Britney Spears manager, Sam Lufty, who at the time was Courtney Love's business manager and had been trying to get Silva to sign a divorce agreement that would give the guitar back to Courtney Love and Francis Bean Cobain. On the night in question, three men dragged Silva out of his house and bundled him into a Cadillac Escalade, took off down the driveway. Fortunately for Silva, a friend of his was at the house and blocked the Escalade until the real LAPD showed up. Now Silva believed Lufty's plan was to take him somewhere and kill him, as according to texts handed over to the court, Lufty had already been threatening to kill both him and his girlfriend Jessica Sullivan over the guitar, all of which Silva alleges was at Love's behest. Ultimately, Silva's case against Love, which alleged trespass, false imprisonment, stalking and extortion, was upheld by a judge in 2019. 
The two parties ultimately reached a settlement in March of 2022, the details of which have not been released at the time of making this video. Fact 5. The new owner of the Cobain D18E is a big name in music. Now, not much is known about the different parties bidding on Kurtz Martin D18E, but once the final hammer fell, the new owner was none other than Rode Microphones founder Pete Friedman. Now, the guitar was expected to fetch about 1.5 million, so the final price of 6 million was kind of a shock to everyone, with Friedman saying, I thought to myself, well, if it goes to 10, bring it on. Interestingly, the Australian entrepreneur said the reason for the purchase was actually to draw attention to the lack of support for the arts community in Australia during COVID-19. Following the purchase, Friedman did interviews with all of the major Australian press and in each instance used the platform to call out the government and press them to do more for musicians and artists whose income had dried up. He said that long term his plan is to take the guitar out on the road across Australia, the US and Europe in an effort to lobby other governments into providing financial assistance to the arts. So that's it for our list. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we did making it. Please let us know in the comments what guitar you'd like us to feature next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and then watch one of these two videos.